Are you a Mac user that wants to install virtual machines on your Mac? You can do that, but there are some things you need to take into consideration both before and while you're installing those operating systems. Let's take a look at what some of those considerations are before we begin, and then let's have a look at how we can install the Mac operating system as a virtual machine on a Mac. We can install Windows 11, we can install Linux, but it's always fun to see Mac installed on a Mac just to see that it can be done. If you're a Mac user, you can also run virtual machines, but there are a couple of things you have to take into consideration. The first thing is what type of Mac do you have? Recently, Mac has switched from using Intel-based processors to using M1-based processors, which uses uh, something called the ARM architecture. So this means that if you're using an older Mac, you have to install virtualization software that is made for the older Mac. If you're running a new M1 Mac, you need to run virtualization software that's made for the new M1 Mac. And the difference here is that it's not built into the operating system. You actually need to go out and purchase that software. So for example, if I'm running a Intel based Mac, I use a product called VMware Fusion. So VMware Fusion, I've just been using it for many years. It's a great product. They are going to release a version that works with the new M1 Max, but currently they don't have that. Now, if I go to the M1 Max, there is a company called Parallels. They've been around for a long time as well. You can use Parallels earlier versions on Intel based Macs, and they are the first one to market with a product that runs and creates virtual machines on the M1 Max. VMware does have an experimental version of VMware Fusion that you can get, but the commercial version of Parallels Desktop 17 works with M1 Max. To make things even a little bit more confusing, you can only run Intel based operating systems on Intel based Macs. You can only run M1 or ARM based operating systems on M1 Macs. So let's say I want to run Windows uh, Server. Windows Server is Intel based. So I cannot run it on an M1 Mac, even as a virtual machine. I'm going to have to find either a Intel based Mac or I'm going to have to run it on a Windows environment. So when I look at something like Parallels Desktop, there is a cost associated with it. It's not built into the operating system. So for example, uh, here I'm looking at somewhere between $100 to $130 Canadian. That's about $70 to $100 US in order just to buy the software to create the virtual machines. If I go to Fusion and I scroll down here, the cost here is about $149 to $199. You really do want the Pro if you can get it because there's a lot of features in there that are kind of handy. That being said, uh, I believe these are US prices, so there is a cost associated. Plus, of course, you have to buy any licensing for the operating systems you're running. But the nice thing is here on my M1 Mac, I'm running Parallels and with Parallels, I can create all sorts of operating systems. I can install Windows 11 because it's an there is an ARM based version of Windows 11. I can install different versions of Linux for example, Ubuntu ARM64, and of course, Mac OS 12 itself is, is ARM-based operating system. So I do have a lot of different choices. The one thing that people will say is they become frustrated because they want to run Windows Server on a new M1 Mac, that's not happening yet. So I have not gotten rid of my old uh, Mac minis that run Intel chips just because I do run virtual versions of Microsoft Windows Server on those Mac minis. They're actually quite handy for that. Let's take a look at creating a virtual machine on an M1 Mac mini. As you can see, in my case, I've already installed a Windows 11 virtual machine as well as an Ubuntu virtual machine. These are ARM based operating systems. So I do receive the warning about the M1 chip that you have to use an ARM based operating system. If I go next, there are several. I can get Windows 11 from Microsoft. I could install one that I have the image for. There's a whole bunch of free ones as well as if I scroll over Mac OS. When I select Mac OS, it's going to say, okay, it's going to be about a 13 gig download. So I'll initiate the download and I'll just pause the video here. No sense watching this, but it does take some time to download. And then once it's downloaded, it has to go through a process of unarchiving the image as well. By far and away, this is the most time consuming portion of creating a Mac virtual machine on top of a Mac. The 
process of downloading can take some time, a couple hours in my case, and then the unarchiving can take some time as well. I just pause the recording in each case to tighten that up a bit. But once that's done, it kicks right off into the installation process. And as you can see, I have the Mac appearing in a window to itself, and it begins as if I had a brand new Mac that I had just booted up. I click on the window and choose my preferred language, so I'll choose English here. And then what I can do is I'll, I'm just going to make the window a little bit larger so that we have a little bit more room to work with here. And I'm going to choose English as my preferred language for my country or region. I'm going to choose Canada. That's where I'm from. And once I choose those, it's going to ask me uh, questions about my preferred settings. So in terms of written and language, it's going to assume that. But if you look at the bottom left, I could customize it. It's going to ask me about accessibility. So in my case, I'm not setting up any accessibility, so I'll say not now. Data and privacy, I'll continue. This is a very interesting feature where I can actually set my Mac up from another Mac, from the time machine or a startup disk, or from a Windows PC. If I try to do this, it will search for that resource. So I don't currently have a time capsule connected to this Mac or a Mac backup, so it's not going to find it. I'd have to go and find it. So instead of doing this from a Windows PC or from a Mac, down at the bottom left, I can say not now, and it's setting up a brand new Mac as if it was from scratch. Now, the first thing it's gonna do is try to get you to log in with your Apple ID. That might be interesting, but if I log in with my Apple ID, then all my Apple ID settings are gonna be applied to this virtual machine. And if I wanna use it as a sandbox machine, maybe I don't wanna do that. So I can set up a new Apple ID. The trick with the new Apple ID is make sure that I choose an email address that doesn't currently have an Apple ID. So I'll have to have maybe a throwaway email address or a secondary email address that I'm not using with Apple. Once I put that in with a password, it'll generate that ID, but it's going to ask for a phone number so that it can verify it. And I'll give it the phone number. It'll text me a special code. I'll input that special code and then it will create this new Apple ID for me. Now in my video, I've blurred out a lot of this, so obviously it's clear on your PC. I'll have to accept the terms and conditions. I will agree to those, and then it'll create that Apple ID for me. That's going to be used in order to log into the services of Apple, but it'll be the unique one as if it was a fresh new account. So it'll create the Apple ID, and that can take a little bit of time, not too terribly long. Then I have to create a computer account. Now what's important here is that I do not use the same password that I used for my Apple ID as my computer password. Those are two separate passwords. So you should put in some sort of hint so that you can make sure to remember it. And if I go in and accept that, it'll now set up my account. It'll connect me to iCloud through my Apple account, my brand new Apple account, and it'll set up my computer account to be my administrator account on this system. It immediately then, after it finishes setting it up, and it takes a little while to go out on the internet, make sure that's all done, it will then just go into my system as if it was a regular Mac computer. And that's a really handy way to do different types of testing in a Mac environment. You can choose what I want to do with location services. In my case, I'm not going to use them. Set up my time zone. So it doesn't really matter in my case, but I'll just choose mountain time somewhere along here. And I will then have a analytics option if I want to share analytics or not and then screen time if I want to have that so just basic housekeeping here as I go through it's really just read and click continue you can choose a theme auto theme depending what time I do these videos usually it's going to be nighttime and you can see it automatically chooses that theme and here we are I have a Mac on my Mac that I can start playing around with start testing applications start seeing how things work this is a very, very useful tool and one that I like quite a lot. Now you're not limited to installing the Mac operating system onto a Mac. As you can see, you can install Windows 11 onto your Mac. You can install Linux onto your Mac if you have an M1. The tricky thing with the Mac is if you have an Intel operating system. So if you want to install an older version of Windows, such as Windows 7 for some reason, or if you want to install Windows Server, then you, you are going to need to look for an Intel-based Mac. And the Mac Minis are really a good option for that. You can get the old Mac Minis at a fairly reasonable price, and then you can install some of the Intel-based operating systems. 
This video is part of a course that I have on Skillshare. I put a link down below if you're interested in checking out Skillshare. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, but I do have courses over there. Check them out, links down below. And also if you like this video, hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and share with colleagues because that really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching.